Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Brown, and we are here to highlight the newest composite by Tokuyama, the Omnichroma and the Omnichroma blocker, and the different uh, ways that we can use this composite in the mouth. It's a universal composite, and is it a single shade, so it will match any color of any tooth. It's an incredible thing, and the science behind it is its structural coloring versus pigmented coloring. So, Today we're going to show you how to use it in the posterior on a standard class 2 composite. We're going to be replacing an existing amalgam and one of the things we often see with these after having been in the tooth for a few years is it can stain the, the tooth structure, the dentin a little bit. And so when we're placing a composite we want to try and block out some of that darker color. Now the Omnichroma is an incredible composite because it matches all the, the tooth color that it bonds to but it's using the tooth color to which it's bonded to obtain its color. And so if we just used all Omnichroma on a posterior tooth that's dark with an old amalgam, then some of that darkness might show through a little bit. So Omnichroma came up with a supplemental composite called Omnichroma Blocker. And what it does is it blocks out excess um, interfering light and colors that are happening within the mouth. So in this case, we'll use a little bit of the blocker on the base part of the composite and then the Omnichroma over the top and we'll see how nice it blends in and, and seals off. So let's get to it. Today we have tooth number 14, um, an MO amalgam. It's been in there for, what do you say, 20 years? Mm -hmm. So let's just start by removing the existing restoration and then we'll see what coloration we're left with. All right, here we go, just a little tap. Okay, so that's what you'll expect there, is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's do it. All right, we got that old filling out. There's not a ton of darkening, but there is a tiny bit down on that mesial box. Now when I do these, these restorations with not just Omnichroma, but any composite, but especially with the Omnichroma, when you're looking to get perfect color adaptation and just get things to disappear perfectly, but also get the strongest marginal integrity and restoration for long-term success, I like to put just a little small bevel on the cavo surface margin of the restoration. And that's just gonna allow a better adaptation and a better seal and help with the C-factor shrinkage that can happen. So let's just use a real fine grit diamond to do that and it's just a very subtle small bevel almost imperceptible and that is it Perfect, okay, and then our wedge. There we go. And okay, let's see what we got. Oh, it's glorious. Look how perfect that is. It's gonna be awesome. All right, so we've got a nice seal. All right, so first step is our special tooth shampoo, a little etch. And we'll let this soak for just a few moments here, Jody, before we rinse it out. Okay, so we're gonna use our 
a Tokuyama Universal Bond today. It's a wonderful bonding resin because it is truly universal and it can be used in all applications on all materials. One of the things that I like best about it is it's not light cured. And so you just place it and air thin it out and you carry on and just keep working. So it's got a really good bonding strength. First, we're gonna put our desensitizing agent on the tooth before we put the bonding resin on. And Jody, what this stuff does is it helps minimize any potential for hot or cold sensitivities on the tooth. Just from having drilled on the tooth, that can happen sometimes. And if you do get a little sensitivity, it's totally normal. It will go away on its own. All right. And this, this bonding resin is also nice because it's not required to scrub it in for 15 or 20 seconds. You just place it, move it around, make sure you got it all over everything, and then you can thin it out really good. Okay, so our first layer is going to be, this is the Omnichroma. So I'm going to first build my little mesial wall and then I'll remove the little matrix system here so we can have better visualization to show you how we can layer the blocker and to hide some of the darkness here. This is a very popular way to restore class two or class three restorations where if you first establish this little um, the proximal wall here and you get your contact, there you go. Then we can remove all this stuff to get it out of our way and we'll have better visualization on, on restoring the rest of the tooth. With our little box established, we're going to remove our uh, little shim here. So from the still photographs, you'll be able to see that there's a little bit of darkness down in there. Uh, it might be harder to see with the video, but this is where I need the blocker now, um, which is this one right here. Okay. And we don't need a lot, but just imagine the blocker acting as a replacement dentin. So you're going to be able to kind of hide colors that you don't want to have come through. And so I'm not going to do the whole box with it, but I'm just going to put a thin coat right over that deepest part in the interproximal box where that darkness was. And I'll just kind of feather it up here onto the rest of the pulpal floor. And that's all you need. All right, and now we can just do the rest of our Omnichroma. Now, depending on the size of the restoration, you can just do one last final layer, or you might need to split it up into a couple layers just to distribute the, the stress of curing it. This one's small enough here. I'm gonna just do one last layer here. Now, the handling of, of this composite is wonderful. It's a, it's a nice, creamy composite so it's easily manipulated and that's such a great characteristic on working with anterior teeth especially. Posteriors it's it's nice and easy to move around and get it into position. If you're the type of dentist that likes to use um, to put your anatomy in, if you even put anatomy in, with an instrument. 
Um, it's not going to work quite as well because it's a, such a nice creamy composite so it may not hold that shape as, as well. So I just like to get it to full contour and cure it. And then I can add any anatomy just with a burr at the end when finishing and polishing. All right, so first I'm gonna work on the proximal shape here. All right, so if you don't even bother to add any occlusal anatomy, that's totally fine. And you would just, at this point, just finish it off, get those edges cleaned up and be done. And it will just blend in perfectly with the color. It looks beautiful. But I like to add a little bit of anatomy, so I'll show you how I do that. I'll use just a flame tip diamond, fine diamond burr. And then I can just get my initial groove outline form done. And then I'll just go around with the same burr and feather it all together. Don't need to go crazy, just some nice, simple, basic anatomy. And then the final polish, I like to use the silicone impregnated brush tip here. It works really good. It gets down into the nooks and crannies and polishes really well without erasing everything you just put in there. A little bit of water. One more time with the water. Kind of keep it going. All right, let's see what we got. And bite down, grind a little bit. Good. That's too bad, it's perfect. Love it. Okay. So the occlusion looks good. Uh, we put in just a little bit of anatomy to finish it off, but even if you don't uh, put the anatomy in, it still blends in just perfectly. Uh, the teeth are a little dehydrated, so once things get perfectly rehydrated, it's going to be just a seamless blend. And it's a great restoration, especially when you start getting up onto the premolars, when you have a little bit of an interproximal box that's going to be visible in the smile, and those composites can darken over time, especially if the patient decides to whiten their teeth. 
This is such a great composite because it'll blend in with the tooth as the teeth whiten or darken. This composite's getting its color from the tooth itself, so it's gonna change with it and always be just spot on color match.